Hey, what's up YouTubers? Mike Borders with the Mike Borders channel. Today we are talking about reverse osmosis system and unfortunately our faucet is leaking. And here's the reverse osmosis faucet that we are referencing. Below the sink now, this is your pressure tank. And what I have is a Tupperware dish right now in the location that the water is dripping. And the first thing we need to do is shut the water off to the reverse osmosis system. And that valve is actually right behind this Tupperware dish. I'm gonna remove this momentarily, squeeze in here, and shut that water line. Just like that. And the way to verify that your valve is closed, the actual valve handle is no longer in line with the reverse osmosis water line that goes up. Next, we need to drain the entire tank. So shift the faucet knob to the full on position and let all that water flow out of the tank. Go ahead and turn the faucet off. Once the water stops coming out of the faucet, we will then direct our attention back to the pressure tank and at this point, it should be very light. We can pick it up and move it out of the way to gain access to underneath the faucet. I pulled the tank out, and in most cases, you will have access to the underside of the reverse osmosis faucet. Unfortunately, in our case, we don't have good access until we remove the garbage disposal. So in the event that you need to remove your garbage disposal, I will link a video at the top. Click on that, runs you through the step-by-step -step process on how to remove that garbage disposal, as well as the importance of turning off your water supply. Garbage disposal is removed. Now we have a lot more room to get underneath the sink and gain access to the lines that feed all the way up to the underside of the reverse osmosis system under the countertop. Next thing I want to point out, since we've removed the garbage disposal, there's nothing down there to catch the water. Do yourself a favor, do not turn the faucet on at this point, or pour any of those Tupperware dishes of water down the drain, because guess what? It's going all over. There is nothing to catch it. Next thing I want to show you is the actual underside of the RL faucet. And in our case, it's pretty tricky. You have to go all the way up and under. And now it's time to access a hex nut on the back side. Let's go ahead and remove that. Next, what we will do is shift the entire faucet to the left very carefully. And it should be very easy to move because this bottom base should be secure by the locking mount below. So again, just be careful as you shift that and we will carefully pull this up and you will see the actual water line that is connected. Next thing we want to do is start loosening that screw and as you loosen this screw, it will begin riding up the actual securing mount down below which is underneath the countertop. And what we will do, we will continue loosening that screw until we can pull this entire base up and access the additional lines that go into the RO faucet. And as you can see, as we loosen up that screw, which ultimately loosens this entire base, there are two additional lines on the back side. This is what that locking plate down below looks like. Again, that screw tightens all the way in, and as you tighten that screw, this rises and becomes flush with the bottom side of the countertop and tightens the base down. On the bottom side, you will notice two Phillips screws down below. As you can see, it's leaking. Let's go ahead and remove those. Here it is disconnected, and I want you to notice that rubber seal or gasket there. Over time, that can dry rot, crack, or warp. Or in the event during the last installation, it was not properly put on correctly, or possibly put on offset and then tightened down. Unfortunately, it wasn't able to do its job from the beginning. So take a good look at that gasket. Make sure it's properly set. Make sure it's not dry rotted, cracked, or warped. Resecure this portion to the actual faucet with those two Phillips screws and see if that fixes the leak. This is exactly what this part does. And in the event that water spills over that little hole, that rubber gasket is supposed to catch it and not allow any water to sneak through that gasket and leak underneath your sink. What we did is we realigned the actual rubber gasket and reinserted that part into the base of the faucet very carefully and then tighten it down and we've turned the water back on and there are no leaks. Locking plate is installed on the bottom side and we are going to position the actual base on the rubber gasket and there's an additional gasket right there as you lower this entire faucet onto the base, make sure that gasket is properly set. 
But prior to doing that, we want to secure that screw and tighten the base to the countertop. On the bottom side of the faucet, you want to make sure that you position that mounting brace in a way that it's securing itself on both sides of the hole as well as not crimping or harming any of the water lines that feed through the hole into the bottom portion of the faucet. Our base is now secure with that screw and again properly set that rubber gasket. From there, rest the faucet on the actual base and turn. Now let's grab that hex screw, insert it, and tighten it down. That's it. As you can see, easy project. Do-it-yourselfers can do this, and it's fun, and it's rewarding. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely go to your settings, turn on your YouTube notifications, because once you do that, every video that we upload, you will be notified. You will be able to stay up to date with us, and that will be cool. Thanks again.